All right. So today we're going to be talking about uh, rate of change, which is also known as slope. So we're moving away a little bit from proportional relationships, and we're going to start looking at other types of relationships that have a consistent rate of change. Um, okay, so some relationships are not proportional, but they still increase or decrease at a constant rate, right? So, um, you know, maybe um, the, the first item you buy costs more, but then after that it's $5 a shirt or whatever it is. Um, you know, the first one costs more to get in. Or for example, um, you know, if you go to a festival, it might cost money to get in and you have to buy tickets for rides. So, um, you know, it might be $2 per ride, um, but also a $10 entrance fee or something like that. And so um, you have to pay the initial $10 and then it goes up by $2 a ride. Um, that sort of consistent rate of change, that constant rate is is called a rate of change. It compares how one quantity changes when compared to another. Um, so in the example of a festival, you know, $2 per ride, um, that's a rate of change. Now you'll notice it sounds a lot like a unit rate, but it's not always because, well, frankly, um, the relationship's not always proportional. And so we're gonna talk about that later on. Um, okay, so uh, in order to find a rate of change, um, this will maybe sound familiar. Um, we're gonna have to choose two points. So if we look here, we have um, hours and distance are the, are the two categories here. I'm gonna choose two points, um, You know the two points that are provided, two comma 110 and four comma 220. Um, then I'm going to find the change in the Y value, which in this case is distance, and the change in the X value, which in this case is time. So the change in y, y goes up by 110 miles, right? From 110 to 210. And of course, if I don't know that, I can just always subtract to figure that out. And the time goes up by two hours because it goes from two hours to four hours. Okay, so I found the change in y and the change in x. And then we simply divide. And the way we divide, we always divide the change in Y divided by the change in X. That's just always how slope is calculated. Um, you will see that 100% of the time. Um, so here, that would be 110 divided by two. And so our our rate of change here would be uh, 55 um, you know, miles per hour. Um, so that's how you find rate of change. Just change in Y divided by change in X. And how do you figure out change in Y and change in X? Well, you need two points to figure it out. You can't find slope from one point because you don't know um, how fast Y is going up and how fast X is going up and that sort of thing. All right, um, so I do wanna note when the relationship is proportional, like in this case, right? It goes through the origin, we have a straight line. When the relationship is proportional, the rate of change is equivalent to the unit rate. So the unit rate of 55 miles per hour is um, also the rate of change because this is a proportional relationship, but imagine if for some reason, you know, you were counting um, and they already started out at 120 and went up like that, well, this is not a proportional relationship, but maybe it's still increasing at a rate of 55 miles per hour. Um, okay, so let's look at a couple more uh, things. Oh, actually, I should talk about the other term for rate of change, which we call slope. So rate of change is also called slope. If I say find the rate of change of this relationship or find the slope of this line, I'm saying the same thing. Uh, slope refers to the steepness of the line. So, um, you know, for example, the slope of this line might be uh, one half. This line might have a slope of one. This line might have a slope of two. This line might have a slope of three. It refers to how fast Y is going up compared to X, 
That's why we do change in Y divided by change in X. Um, and so it's about the steepness of the line. So it's important to know that slope can be positive or it can be negative. So all these would be like, you know, negative one, negative two, um, negative one half, negative one third. Why is, why is it negative? Well, it has to do with, if you read a graph from left to right, which you always should, if you start low and go high, that is positive. If you start high and go low, that is negative. Um, okay, so let's find the slope or the rate of change of two other relationships. Okay, so let's find it from a table. Um, this is that example I was kind of referring to, right? How much money you've spent at a fair and how many rides you've written. Um, so we're still going to do the exact same thing. We're going to find two points. Um, we're going to find change in Y and divide it by change in X. So my two points, really what I can do is I can pick two rows on the table. And I just picked these randomly. You can pick whichever ones you want. Um, okay, so now to find change in Y and change in X, I remember that X is always my first column and Y is always my second. So I'm going to find um, change in Y over here. So what did ch Y change by here? Now we're no longer looking for a multiplier, we're actually looking for a, um, you know, a distance. So we're gonna subtract. So 26 um, minus 14, is 12. So the change in y, and I always write plus or minus. Why do I do that? Because I want to know, did y go up or did y go down? That's really important to figure out um, whether the slope is positive or negative. Then I go to change in x. And from here to here, you know, 4 minus 1 is 3. So that would be plus 3. So then to find my slope, I do change in y, which is 12, over change in x, which is 3, and my slope is 4. So what that means is y goes up by 4. The money you spent at, spend at the fair goes up by $4 every time you ride a ride. That tells you how much a ride costs. So that's how you find slope from a table. Let's find slope from a graph one more time. All right, so we have our two points. Um, so I'm going to find change in Y. So from here to here, it goes from 200 to 425. So if I do 425 minus 200, I get 225. So it goes up 225. And the change in X, it goes from one to four. So I do four minus one, that's three. So it goes over three. So we get 225 divided by three. Why? Because it's the change in y over the change in x. 225 divided by three, I should figure this out ahead of time, is 75, I believe. Um, now notice this is not a proportional relationship. Also the table we saw before, not a proportional relationship, but it does go up at a constant rate. And you can tell because it's a straight line. And you can tell this one, this table goes up at a constant rate because it goes up by four and then four and then four and then four, one and then one and then one and then one. So it goes up at a constant rate. So it has a slope, it has a rate of change, but it's not proportional. That's a big distinction. All right, long video guys, sorry about that, but it's a big, big important concept.